Hello, I'm Jim Gordon. I'm treasurer for Citizens for Regional Transit, a transit advocacy organization not-for-profit in Buffalo, New York. Today's topic is the Kensington Expressway. Buffalo has an urban expressway called the Kensington Expressway that is under review right now by the New York State Department of Transportation. The question comes down to, should the expressway be capped or should it be filled in? This screenshot from the New York State Department of Transportation website shows the project area scope. We're looking southwest from East Ferry Street toward downtown, which you can see the downtown buildings in the background, and Lake Erie is beyond that. The title of the project is New York State Route 33 Kensington Expressway Project. The title does not mention that this is Humboldt Parkway. Over the years, the New York State Department of Transportation has held various public scoping meetings on this topic. Most recent was June 30th, 2022 at the Buffalo Museum of Science. At this particular scoping meeting, they learned from previous meetings to not have open mics. Apparently, they don't like to hear that the public would rather have the highway filled in than being capped. At this meeting, they only offered a cap. CRT's position is as follows. Humboldt Parkway should be restored on the original alignment designed by Frederick Law Olmsted, but with a modern, complete street, having one lane 36 feet wide in each direction and one lane of parking. There should be a separated bike track, having one track in each direction, each track no more than 6 feet in width. The roadway footprint should be the same as it was before Route 33 ruined Humboldt Parkway. The median should be its original 84-foot width, with appropriate soil for full-size 60-foot tall trees, bushes, decorative lighting, plants, benches, and gardens in a park setting. This map shows the original alignment of Humboldt Parkway, and this is the alignment that should be restored. It should connect Delaware Park with Humboldt Park, which is now called Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Park, or MLK Park. It is important to note that this roadway was intended to be a linear park connecting two main parks, MLK and Delaware Park. It was never intended to carry a lot of traffic or be a major arterial. Level of Service, or LOS. CRT believes that counting people far outweighs the value of counting cars. The surface that should be provided is moving people, not cars. CRT recommends the removal of all expressway elements between Northampton Street and downtown. CRT recommends the restoration of Cherry Street as a complete street zone for business, light industrial, mixed use, and residential. This is present-day Bidwell Parkway. Bidwell Parkway is part of the same linear park as Humboldt Parkway. Notice the feature of a large median with full-grown trees, a beautiful lawn, two lanes of traffic, one in each direction, crosswalks, and parking. This is a view of the present-day parade. The parade, Bidwell Parkway, and Humboldt Parkway are elements of the world-famous Frederick Law Olmsted Buffalo Parks system. This system was constructed all about the same time. These examples show the beauty of the concept of the city in the park, pioneered by Frederick Law Olmsted for the city of Buffalo. Across from these homes is the Buffalo Museum of Science. This is the kind of magnificent view that people who live on the parade and their visitors see simply by looking out the front window. Just a few steps from where the last picture was taken is this picture. We're looking at the parade facing north in front of the Buffalo Museum of Science. There are still original homes from the original alignment of Humboldt Parkway standing in this picture. This is a view of the same seven properties from the last shot, this time facing south. In this picture, you can see the size of the original front yards and the setback from the street as well as the width of the sidewalk. We just looked at the northbound lane of Humboldt Parkway at its southern end. Now we'll just turn to the left a little bit and look at the southbound lane of Humboldt Parkway. All that remains of the original southbound alignment is this short stub 
between North Parade Street and where I'm standing in front of the Buffalo Science Museum. As I cross North Parade and approach the railing, we can now see what New York State Route 33 Kensington Expressway looks like compared to the beautiful forested trees that existed prior to this expressway. They said, hey, this is progress. How is it progress? How do you just cut right through a neighborhood? One side gets destroyed because of it. The other side barely holds on. It'll make you cry. What in the world happened? Every record shows us there were public forums, there were public hearings, where people said, don't do this. It's going to really destroy neighborhoods, and they did it anyways. Citizens for Regional Transit is not alone in calling for the removal of the Route 33 Kensington Expressway and the removal of the Route 198 Skajakwada Expressway with resulting restoration of Humboldt Parkway. The Glenn Beck program summarized a New York Times article regarding racist highways. The Kensington Expressway meets the definition of a racist highway as explained by the New York Times. CRT has identified two main concepts that we call the roots of transportation evil. First is level of service, or LOS. It sounds innocent enough. If you can make a road faster without stops for the motoring public, then you have improved the level of service. Funding ratios are also another problem, but we'll focus for now on level of service. Every road, every highway, every street gets graded by your highway department, the State Department of Transportation, you name it, they grade it using the LOS grading system. Here it is explained. The grading system starts with grade A, which is the best level of service that has free flowing traffic with low volume of traffic and high speeds. Deterioration in level of service is worst at grade F, which is a forced or breakdown flow of traffic. Unacceptable congestion. Stop and go. This is a grade A intersection. No one has to stop. Traffic flows quickly. Maintaining or improving the level of service is a key objective of the New York State Department of Transportation Kensington Expressway project. Level of service is for only the motoring public. Everyone else is left out. Pedestrians, bicyclists, the people who live in the neighborhood, everyone else except the motorist is disregarded. Level of service is an inappropriate objective for the Humboldt Parkway corridor. We think the DOT objectives are defective. This should not even be an expressway project. This should be a project about restoring the Humboldt Parkway. The current New York State proposal is complete reconstruction of the Kensington Expressway because it is old and needs full rebuild as a six-lane tunnel for improved community connections and establishing Victorian gardens. This is an example of a cap over Interstate 5 in Seattle. It's called Freeway Park. Notice the trees are in planters with very shallow roots. You will never have full-size trees on an expressway cap. Victorian gardens never have tall, majestic, beautiful, full-size trees. New York State is very concerned about the air quality for motorists in the cap area. New York DOT has been vague about tunnel ventilation, but all of their proposals involve mechanical and ventilation buildings that will move air from the tunnel to the surrounding neighborhood. Five of these ventilation facilities will be placed on the cap between North Parade and East Ferry Street. The cost to maintain these facilities will be $12 million a year. 
If the Humboldt Parkway were restored, what would happen to all the traffic? Restore Our Community Coalition points out that in Milwaukee, Portland, and San Francisco, the phenomenon of Carmageddon, where traffic would be thoroughly congested, has been debunked. Let's have a look at traffic counts provided by the New York State Traffic Viewer using 2019 pre-pandemic data for the Humboldt Parkway corridor. On a typical day on the Kensington Expressway at Grider Street, approximately 112,000 cars pass by. That represents 448,000 tires, or about 30,000 people going in each direction. At East Utica Street, about 75,000 cars pass daily. About 60,000 cars pass through the Fruit Belt daily. Buffalo's radial streets, along with north-south streets and east-west streets, have more than enough excess capacity to handle all of the traffic that would be caused by restoring the Humboldt Parkway and closing Route 33 Kensington Expressway south of Northland Avenue. The typical Buffalo Street can handle about 25,000 cars a day. Genesee Street all by itself could handle 20,000 extra cars a day. CRT has identified more than 20 major arterials that could handle the extra traffic from Route 33. What went wrong in the 1950s and 60s and again in 1989 when a third lane was added to the Kensington Expressway is that accounting for other values besides motorists was ignored. The land use, the quality of life, the park, the trees, the residents, all ignored. And unfortunately, it seems that New York State Department of Transportation wants to perpetuate these very same mistakes again today. How much would it cost to fill in the expressway and restore the parkway? Buffalo Rising postulates that it would cost less than $300 million. This picture shows Humboldt Parkway in 1953. We would like to see it restored to something similar to this, but with a dedicated parking lane, one travel lane, and a dedicated protected bike lane, along with decorative street lighting. Unfortunately, it simply is impossible to restore 100-year-old trees without waiting the time that it takes to grow trees 100 years. We will have to settle for saplings and just wait for them to grow. How much would it cost to cap a portion of the Kensington Expressway? The Buffalo News pegs the cost at about a billion dollars. New York DOT says that's plus 12 million dollars a year to maintain mechanical air cleaners coming to a total of 1 billion $360 million. CRT thinks that in conjunction with restoring Humboldt Parkway, that a high-speed alternative be offered for travelers who want to go east and west in the region. We think this could be solved with a fast train with high-speed metro rail cars going 50 miles an hour on dedicated rights-of-way which currently exist. The rail cars would not be in mixed traffic, would be powered by electricity providing zero greenhouse gas emissions. The route would be from downtown through Central Terminal to the airport and out to transit. Transit Road. CRT estimates that the cost of building a light rail rapid transit system would cost somewhere between $67 million a mile and $100 million a mile. We'll use the highest figure so that we don't oversell the project. This is about a 12-mile project, which comes to $1.2 billion for the rail system. Add to that the cost of $300 million to restore the parkway. It brings the total to $1.5 billion. This is about the same cost as capping just a portion of Humboldt Parkway. Unlike an expressway, light rail rapid transit generates revenue. Is the Kensington Expressway an asset, or is it a liability? We can measure this easily by comparing two nearly identical properties, one on Bidwell Parkway, the other on Humboldt Parkway. If the expressway is good for the community and is an asset, a property on Humboldt Parkway will be worth more than a similar property on Bidwell Parkway. Let's compare. First up, 122 Bidwell Parkway, a seven-bedroom, three-bath, 3,300-square-foot property built in 1910. 
The Zillow estimate for this property is $583,100. Next up, also seven bedrooms, two baths, also 3,300 square feet, 832 Humboldt Parkway, has a driveway, built in 1900 about the same time, Zillow estimate, $132,800. The property on Humboldt Parkway is worth $453,399 less, or about 77% less than the property on Bidwell Parkway. That is the penalty that is imposed by having an expressway in your front yard. When you live on Bidwell Parkway, you see a beautiful tree-lined street. When you live on Humboldt Parkway, this is a typical view from your front window to your neighbors across the street. There are two aspects of gentrification that should be considered. The first aspect has to do with filling in the Kensington Expressway and restoring the Humboldt Parkway. Is gentrification a concern with rising property values over time? It is unreasonable to expect property values will rise instantly. The trees that will be planted will be saplings. It'll take 50 years before they reach full canopy. The neighborhood is 60 years behind on updates. It's going to take a lot of money and a lot of time to bring the neighborhood to the condition that Bidwell Parkway and Chapin Parkway are in today. There's no guarantee that it will actually ever happen. We don't know if there will be developer interest. There is also the possibility that speculators may come in, purchase the properties, and just sit on them. So we will need to have gentrification policies in place should the DOT decide to restore Humboldt Parkway. The other aspect of gentrification involves the light rail rapid transit proposal for the East Buffalo extension to the airport and beyond. Unlike the expressway that is a liability, light rail rapid transit is an asset and it increases the surrounding property values. However, the positive effects of equitable transit-oriented development are nowhere near as profound as the negative effects of the expressway. CRT's updated report on the East Buffalo Metro Rail extension should be out very soon. What about safety? What is the safety record of the Kensington Expressway versus Metro Rail? A web search on Kensington Expressway fatalities turns up more deaths, more injuries, more destruction, more property damage than we have time to list here. Upon our return from video shoots and photography for this video, we learned of an early morning crash that killed three or more people on the Kensington Expressway. This is the Kia Sportage that was involved in the crash. We find it disturbing that some media apparently put level of service above all other considerations for the consequences of this crash. It almost seems cruel to report that the most important thing about the loss of the lives of the people in this crash is that they shut down the inbound lanes of the Kensington Expressway for more than an hour. At least the Buffalo News has their priorities right. compared the safety record of the Kensington Expressway with the safety record of Buffalo Metro Rail. Since its inception, Buffalo Metro Rail has had no derailments, no passenger fatalities. This view of Humboldt Parkway is facing north from Madai University's Public Safety Office. What's it like to cross Humboldt Parkway here? It's a terrifying, death-defying experience that left these pedestrians visibly shaken.
CRT feels it's unconscionable for the New York State Department of Transportation to use level of service as an objective for the Humboldt Parkway. All expressway elements along Humboldt Parkway should be removed and the Humboldt Parkway should be restored to its former glory.